Hi, in this example, I will show you how to interpolate velocity data from one mesh to another mesh using VTK. So this is a useful problem. If, for example, let's say in this case, we're going to be taking this data, the same class R3 data we've been working with, and then I want to interpolate it to this mesh, which is a smaller region of interest with a different mesh spacing and mesh resolution. Okay, so I'm gonna take my velocity data, this original mesh, interpolated in this blue mesh that you see here. Now, why is this useful? This is useful in many cases. For example, let's say you have two different sets of data, CFT simulations with different resolutions, and you'd like to do some sort of error analysis. Okay, you'd like to uh, quantify some sort of error or compare data quantitatively. Another example of that is that when you have experimental data, then you have CFD data, you want them to do a, a data simulation. So you need to have a data in a step, maybe perhaps defined in similar points. And then um, another example of that, which is what I've used extensively in the past, is for solving advection diffusion mass transfer problems. So these are the problems I talked about in the Phoenix tutorials. And um, uh, there, because specifically in cardiovascular mass transport or really most biotransport processes, we have very high peck length schmidt numbers. We need to have very, very thin uh, concentration boundary layers. So our mesh for the mass transport problem needs to be much, much finer than the CFD mesh near the wall. So therefore, what I always do is that I take the velocity data from CFC simulation, I interpolate it to another mesh, which is specifically for mass transport problem, and then use that to solve the advection diffusion equation because velocity is an input uh, uh, field variable for the advection diffusion equation and a fine concentration. So here's an example of that actually. So here's the, the mesh that we want to interpolate to in this case is uh, one of the test meshes we've tested uh, for uh, doing mass transport. So you can see it's a very, very fine mesh near the wall. And we want to interpolate our CFD mesh, which is this original mesh here. That looks, uh, if I bring the mesh, it looks something like this. We want to interpolate this to uh, to our, uh, to that finer near the wall mesh for doing you know, something like mass transport in this case. Okay, great. So here's the code. Uh, uh, so at the bottom of the code, I specified the field name, the variable that I'd like to interpolate, in this case, velocity. And you should always read, look at your data and the information in Paraview, and you can see that what's the name of the variable you're interested in. In this case, it's called velocity. Uh, so I'm going to take velocity. Here I have written it as a for loop. So most likely I'd like to do this over all the time steps of my data that I've saved. So you can do define the index, the first one, how much, how the increment, and also how many files you have. So T is the total number of files. Uh, and in this case, I'm only going to do it for just one file. Okay. So this is my input file name. And then you know it adds this number and VTU to it and then reads it, the output directory, the new mesh. So I defined the new mesh that I'd like to interpolate to. And also there's something interesting here. Uh, I also need to define the no slip wall for the new mesh. So if this is my new 3D mesh, I also need something like this, which is just the uh, wall of that. And I'm going to use this data, the wall of my uh, new mesh, to hard code the no-slip condition, to enforce the no-slip condition at the wall. And this is because when you interpolate uh, to a new mesh because of round of errors, perhaps at the wall, you will not get the no-slip condition satisfied anymore. So what you want to do is that you, you might want to overwrite that. So I do that because, and I can easily do that in this example, because the, I get this wall uh, surface mesh with global node IDs attached to it. So this, this is an array called global node IDs. And the same array also exists in my uh, 3D mesh for the mesh that I'd like to interpolate my data to. So I have this global node ID array. So I know where every point is basically. So that helps me to do this. Uh, and this has been, this has been created from C-Mascular. So when you mesh a geometry in C-Mascular, you get all these files. 
And if you don't have it, you need to, if your mesh comes from another software, you need to somehow be able to provide this link between your surface and node. So you can somehow hard code the no slip condition uh, if you're getting this round of errors that you're not exactly satisfying the no slip boundary condition after interpolation. Okay, so here's my code. So on the top of the function, what I do is that I read my new mesh. So I call VTK external unstructured grid reader, set file name, read the new mesh, and send the output of that to data ISO and also see how many points I have. And then I also read the uh, uh, wall. I call that data wall. So that's the wall that I can know where the nodes are. And I get those node IDs. So global node IDs, I can get them from data wall and data ISO. So I get the global node IDs, the array for them, I get it from uh, my wall mesh and also get it from the 3D mesh that I'd like to interpolate my data to. And then what I do is that I loop over all my files. So these are the original files that I had, the original mesh. I read my file. I uh, convert the field name, in this case, velocity, to an array I call well here. So I can interpolate it. For the first time step, what I do is I set up the, the uh, mesh, the new mesh, the points that I'd like to interpolate to. So I loop over all the points in, uh, in my new mesh and I use data ISO. That's remember, this is the new mesh and I get the points and I append them to a VTK unstructured grid. So I, this point data is a VTK class that contains the, the coordinates of all the points in my new mesh. Okay, and these are the points that I'd like to find out what the velocity value is. It's my new mesh. So then what I do is that I use the probe filter. Okay, I set the input data. So these are the point data. These are the points that I'd like to probe my, my data. So these are the series of coordinates that I'd like to know what is the value for velocity at these new coordinate points. So I set them here and set, I also set source data. So source data is the original a data set that I'd like to probe the data from. In this case, that's called data, and that's the actual full mesh, the CFD mesh that I have here. So in this case, that would be this full mesh here. And then I update probe, <clears throat> so it executes it. And then I get the output, and I get the array field name, velocity, and I store it in array here. So this is going to give me a VTK array, and I can convert it to NumPy. So a well interpret is my NumPy, NumPy version of that array. And then what I can do using the global uh, node IDs, I can hard code the no slip nodes to be zero. That's what this loop here does. And then takes the well, well interpret that's been hard coded to be zero at the wall, converts it back to VTK. And then what it does is that uh, it creates this VTK array output VTK sets a name to it. I'm going to set it again, call it again velocity. And I'm going to add that to my data ISO. So data ISO, remember, was the new mesh that we had. And I'm going to add this velocity interp to that new mesh. So now I have in my new mesh a new array that I'll be able to see in pair view. That's my interpolated velocity. And I can save that similar to how we've been doing this in the past. OK, so now let's take a look. So this is what. I'm going to load my interpolated data here. So you can see that's the new domain. So you're looking at global node IDs. If I click on velocity, now you see velocity on this new interpolated on this new mesh. So if I show you the surface with edges, so you can see this is the new very fine boundary near the wall mesh. Uh, and uh, you can uh, also see, make sure that the values at the wall are indeed zero. So if I rescale based on what I'm looking at here, you can uh, let me see, zoom in here, rescale my data. So I can see that the data is pretty much zero at the wall. So you know, a, a great way to test that is that you just scale it between zero to a very small value. And you'll see that you get red everywhere at the inlets and outlets, and at the wall, everywhere is blue. So you know, with a very good accuracy, you know, you're pretty much exactly have zero at the wall because you hard coded that. But you should always check that whenever you're interpolating data between meshes to make sure you, you're satisfying the no slip condition. So uh, yeah, so this is something useful. You know, typically when we do that, we in this example, I only did it for uh, one file, but you know, you could use the same code 
by defining it appropriately to loop over a series of time steps of files and do this interpolation to a new mesh for a series of files. 